Welcome to The Practical Intuitive, where each Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern, where host Robin Fritz explores mind, body, and spirit for the real world. Because we are all intuitives and healers, and we must all learn to love ourselves and live that love every day. Robin is a trained and certified intuitive and spiritual consultant and hypnotherapist with an international practice based in Seattle, Washington. As the practical intuitive, she covers personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice. It's all here. Readings, healings, and funny, warm, thought-provoking conversations. It's Robin Fritz, the practical intuitive, helping you mastermind body and spirit for the real world. No ifs, ands, buts, or BS ever. Welcome to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz, and today we're going to talk about how to talk with your own animals. I know it's surprising, but even professional animal communicators have trouble connecting with their own animals. I am, of course, speaking for myself here, but I know I am not alone in that. And partly it's because we're sometimes too close to them to them and our anxieties and our desires get in the way of communication. In other words, we're human. So today I'm going to share some stories to give you an idea of what I'm talking about and how to talk with our own animals, some tips, uh, some things I learned the hard way, um, and you know some ideas including how to create a buddy system with other humans to connect with your own animals and with theirs. But before we get started, I, I want to tell you how to get in touch here. First of all, if you want to call in today to ask to talk with an animal quickly or to share your observations in talking with your animals, please call 202-570-7057 if you're shy. Or have a question about something else, please feel free to email me at my website, robinfritz.com. That's R-O-B-Y-N-F-R-I-T-Z dot com. And you'll find on my website all the different services I offer, personal and business intuition, mediumship, animal communication, space clearing, past life and between life regression, soul progression clearing. All of that, plus videos and books and, oh my gosh, webinars, it's all there. So take a look. So before we get really into the show today, let's get grounded and balanced with the Crystal Fallon. Fallon is, if you will, my business partner. He is a citrine Lemurian quartz, a very rare type of crystal, and even more rare in that Fallon is an ancient healer and a truth bringer. As far as I know, we are the only ancient human crystal partnership back publicly in the world, although I know of at least two others that are practicing in secret. And our job is to go out and to help people connect with other, whether it's animals, trees, hurricanes, whatever, uh, volcanoes, even our past previous incarnations um, in previous lifetimes. So we are here serving the world and having fun doing it and being awed by how amazing people are and the partnerships they create in the world, including those relationships with their animals. So as you get grounded and balanced here today with Fallon, I want you to think of connecting with Fallon. And if you have animals present or deceased, or um, And if you don't, then imagine connecting to your home or some other being um, not a human so that you're imagining the connection to other. So if you take your attention to the top of your head, we're bringing mind, body, and spirit together. And as you breathe down from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, imagine connecting with Fallon and just releasing the cares of the day so you're not distracted by what went on today and you've got this time to be in community with us so breathing down from the top of your head down your face your shoulders your chest your hips your knees and your feet that top of your head to the bottom of your feet 
And now as you breathe up, just imagine connecting with Fallon in the way your intuition works most strongly. You may see pictures, hear him chat, feel his energy, just know you're connected. Or you can imagine a gold light going straight to your heart and with each beat of your heart flooding your body with healthy healing energy. Breathing up from your feet, past your knees, your hips, your chest, your shoulders, your face, the top of your head. So you may notice some dizziness um, during the show today. That's your crown chakra wide open, receptive to Fallon. We'll close down at the end of the hour so that uh, you can get up and go about the rest of your day um, and not be dizzy, right? Okay, so um, this post this show was postponed from a few weeks ago on April 15th. I spontaneously covered the fire that um, took out the majority of, uh, well, the entire roof and uh, for a while uh, was possibly going to destroy Notre Dame Cathedral. And it's one of the examples of my work in the world, which is to connect with all beings regardless of what they look like. Now, for most of us, that's connecting with our animal families. And I believe one of the really great things that have happened that has happened in the last 40 years or so is that people have realized that they can communicate with animals and not just in our everyday body language, emotional connection, um, which we have had throughout human and animal history, but in a deeper way, actually be able, able to share our thoughts and feelings and understand theirs by chatting with them, if you will, the same way as we talk with other humans. Of course, that depends on how your intuition works. So in my work as a professional intuitive, um, I tap all of the main intuitive abilities, seeing pictures, uh, feeling feelings and emotions, chatting with them, and knowing what's going on. And so I need to be able to balance all of those different intuitive abilities to have a conversation with an animal or with a home, a space that I'm clearing or with the dead or whatever it is that I'm doing to support um, my clients. And then of course my own life and uh, especially my life with my animal family. But um, you may be surprised to know that even professional animal communicators can have trouble connecting with their own animals, and that's because we're really close to them. And we, when um, our our emotions get in the way, our anxieties, our temper tantrums, um, and particularly if um, our animals are ill. Just like everyone else, we're worried about the outcome, worried about what decisions to make for them. And sometimes we need to reach out to other people. That's what I call the buddy system. And whether you're a professional intuitive or not, um, learning to use your intuition by working with another person and sharing what you're getting back and forth, uh, especially in tough times, is one of the best ways that you can learn to develop your own intuitive abilities and get comfortable in particular with the subject we're dealing with today, communicating with your own animals. So I'm going to give you some tips on that today and some stories. So, um, and, you know, I'm always out front with sharing my own uh, failures (laughs) as well as my triumphs and all of the work that I do. And uh, so let me tell you about what I knew about connecting with animals before I even heard the words animal communication. And many years ago, um, I was living in Michigan and um, decided I wanted a dog and someone directed me to English cockers. English cockers were really rare back then. um, And... um, The first dog I brought home was an older dog, wanted nothing to do with my husband at the time, and uh, that just couldn't fly. So I returned this dog to the breeder who referred me to a breeder who had a puppy for sale. Actually, the breeder had two puppies for sale. We went to visit them on a day where it was like 20 below zero and nobody should be driving in the first place. But, you know, you just don't think about things like that because in Michigan, they clear the roads. That had been here in Seattle, 20 below zero, we would all be 
laid out flat from shock and definitely without power. Um, so that wouldn't have been possible then. But it was a very, very cold day in January. We were visiting with a breeder. They had a black cocker and they had what they call a blue roan cocker, which is kind of art deco y, black and white, all the dots and everything running together. And that's why they call it a blue roan. Anyway, a lot going on on that body, kind of avant garde coloring, if you will. And I had my heart set on the black cocker, and the couple were talking to me and pretty insistent that I take the blue roan co English cocker. Why? Because I was very active at the time. It was before I got handicapped. Um, so I was out and about, you know, cross country skiing, whatever I was doing, bicycling, walking, whatever, um, out and about in business. So very active. And they thought the Blue Roan would be a better match for me than uh, the Shire Black Cocker. They thought should go with an older gentleman. So finally I agreed, I signed the papers. So here's what happens when you're looking at communicating with an animal and you're thinking, I need to talk mind to mind with them. What we're forgetting in a lot of cases or just taking for granted is the natural relationship we establish with an animal on a day-to-day -day basis in our households or the very startling, um, absolutely undeniable uh, communication an animal directs at us. That happened that day with this blue roan English cocker who became Maggie, one of the great loves of my life. She was play she was about six months old at the time. She just lost her show career to buck teeth, so she wasn't going to be able to make it in the show ring. So they put this dog up for sale along with her other sister. And I had agreed to take her, and she was 20, 30 feet across the room playing with a cat and another dog. And when we stood up to go, she whirled around. She looked at me, eyes wide in shock, and I could hear this voice say, What? You're leaving without me? And she took off running, and she came charging the full length of the room, her eyes intent on me jumped up on my legs, literally climbed up my body till I had to wrap my arms around her to keep her from falling, continued to climb up her, my body, wrapped her front legs around my neck and would not let go. <laughs> oh, we were all like stunned. And I looked at my husband and his face was like, oh crap, we're getting a dog for sure now. <laughs> and the couple went, oh my God, we've never seen anything like this, but we're going to tell you one thing. This dog is your dog. She's clearly chosen you. And if you had not already agreed to take her, we would insist on it now. And they were right. This dog had made a choice. I have no idea why at the time. And we actually lived our entire life together without me recognizing that she and I had had many lifetimes together. And um, I think that's a loss for our relationship then and now. Um, now she uh, works with my dad, Ray, at his way station for dead things on the other side. My dad's work of greeting the newly uh, transitioned dead into the afterlife. And Maggie works with him there. She has reincarnated in my life three times in three separate dog bodies. She's currently here in the dog body that is currently called Ollie and is usually called Ollie um, unless he uh, responds to something else like, hey you, what do you think you're doing? Um, but the, the gist of the story is if that had happened to you, you would know immediately that this dog had chosen you and you would respond exactly like I did. Okay, I'm going home with this one because clearly she's right. She saw something that she wanted and I was it. And, you know, it's okay if we live our entire lives with those kinds of relationships because that is the first and basic relationship we have with an animal. The day-to-day -day ins and outs of living with animals where we can look at them and see, well, we hurt their feelings by yelling at them or they're hungry or they're not feeling well or they're startled by something on the street or they're really excited about something. You know all of those things by observing your animals in their daily lives. So in fact, you're already communicating with them. And that should give you a real boost of confidence in your ability to carry that communication one step further 
which is learning to connect with them telepathically, mind to mind. And how you do that is how your intuition works. And how you learn how your intuition works is by experimenting. I mean, it's not just going to suddenly happen if you don't pay attention. Well, it is happening all the time. But if you don't pay attention to how your intuition works, you're going to miss the clues that it's giving you, which could be ultimately life-threatening, but certainly keep you from having the full experience of being human in the world, which is having your intuitive and healing abilities front and center with the physical abilities we're all used to, the seeing, the feeling, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling, all of those abilities that our intuition and our healing abilities augment. So, um, I think how much closer I would have been to Maggie if I'd realized we were actually talking to her. But in a, in a very real sense, we were both really content with what we had. I mean, I remember sitting on the floor brushing her and my husband was standing there chatting with me and I um, was brushing Maggie and I said, okay, turn around. And she promptly turned around and my husband like stopped and he looked at her and he looked at me and he was like, kind of backing away like what was that all about and the truth of the matter is I was talking to this dog and she was responding to me I just wasn't always listening and I learned that lesson when I met Murphy Brown my first Cavalier King Charles Spaniel way back in 1998 Um, and when uh, I had agreed to buy her with talking with a breeder on the phone she was two hours away And the following weekend, I went down to pick her up. And as I walked through the door, I saw two, three heads, the mother, the grandmother, and the puppy head. And as the puppy head bounced up so she could see what was going on, our eyes met, and I heard this voice in my head go, oh, it's you. And I felt the same reaction, like, oh, I know you. So after the break, we'll continue talking about how to connect with our own animals. Hang in there. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. I Om FM. Home Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Home Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Welcome back to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz, and today we're talking about how to talk with your own animals, how to put animal communication into practice in your families. And if you have a question, if you want to share a story, call in to 202-570-7057, or otherwise email me at my website, robinfritz.com, that's R O B Y N. F-R-I-T-Z dot com. Okay, so really the biggest problem 
the biggest thing that we need to do, the biggest problem we have around communicating with our animals is learning to relax around it, learning to make it fun, learning to make it practical and everyday. After all, when you're learning to communicate with a baby, um, learning to communicate with a new person that you meet on the street or somebody at work, okay, um, you speak, you converse with them, you introduce yourself, you relax around it, and you're also paying attention to body language, to what um, their movements and how they're reacting and how they're holding their shoulders, how they're shifting their eyes, whether they're looking at you at all or looking away at something else. All of that is giving you ideas about what the person in front of you is thinking or saying. In the same way, if you notice a little baby um, looking at you and responding to you, and after a very short period of time, uh, they make it very clear that they recognize people, family members, and parents, and like shy away from strangers. So you're really having the same kind of relationship with your animals. You just think differently about it because they're animals, right? Um, and uh, realize that if you start to relax around it, that you make it fun and you challenge yourself to really get down and get involved with connecting with them, you'll realize that you've been communicating with them since you first met and sometimes before that. Um, I, I know uh, very uh, my own animals were, especially my most recent animals, Ollie, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, and Karis, my Russian blue cat, were chatting with me long before I first met them. In fact, with Ollie before he was even conceived. Um, but, you know, that's after many years of realizing the differences in, in the world and that all life is equal to us and part of the reason we can't communicate with animals or anything else is that we don't think they can or are or capable or as smart as we are or have the same intelligence level or the same consciousness. That's a mistake that science has run us into and that's that's a problem and we can deal with that in another episode. But right now when you're thinking about communicating with your animals Believing that you can communicate with them and showing them that you're interested in it will get you over the hump of thinking that this is weird or they don't want to talk to me or I'm just not any good at it or I can't do that. It will also get them over the hump of thinking you're not interested enough to try. Now, um, Murphy was my first Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and I started getting interested in communication you know, accidentally. I mean, one of the things I was developing in that first year was trying to convince myself that I was capable of communicating with her and driving her nuts trying to get her to talk with me and not realizing that it was basically what you hear of as a two-way street. I wasn't paying attention to the clues she was giving me. In fact, um, when we were doing a charitable event through uh, the Cavalier Rescue Group um, that was part of the Cavalier Club here. Um, she would, she told an animal communicator I hired to come in and chat with people. She said, uh, oh, Robin talks to me all the time and I talk back, but she hardly ever hears me. You know, and that's like, oh my God, that hurt. And it was true. Um, not because I didn't want to, but because I wasn't paying attention to her on the same way that she was paying attention to me. In other words, I'd have to say I was trying too hard. We'd sit in bed at night and I'd look at her and I'd, she'd sit there facing me and I'd go like, Murphy, talk to me. And she'd, she'd literally sigh and roll her up and I'd go, oh my God, are we doing this again? And the truth of it was... It's much easier than you think. So if you think, I can't do this or I don't know how to do this, relax. Relaxing is my first and most important tip to you. Well, my second most important tip. The first tip is to realize that all life is equal to us. It's a mindset I call planetary connection. I did not make this up. I 
developed it by talking with non-humans and hearing what they had to say about humans, how we don't pay attention to other beings, how we don't think that they exist, how we don't think that they can communicate with us. And why would anything want to communicate with us if we're not paying attention to it? Oops, forgot to unplug my phone, so hang on. Um, so the thing of it is, uh, sorry, um, first of all is to realize that the world is full of equals. Therefore, our difficulty in communicating with other beings isn't that we can't. It's that we think they have to be able to talk like we do. Um, while I did have a dog, Alki, who did speak out loud in English and shocked the heck out of me, he only did it once, and he only needed to do it once because I realized that I was not paying attention to what he was actually trying to say or how he was actually communicating with me. That was my lesson to learn. And your lesson to learn is that it's much easier than we think, and you need to relax around it. You need to um, want to have to have a conversation with him. You want to be able to not treat him like tiny, tiny little creatures or f figurines that, you know, are just there staring at us, but are living beings who have chosen that particular body to grow their soul in that particular incarnation. They didn't choose it to well, okay, I was going to say they didn't choose it to goof off, but in fact, my kids have chosen their bodies partly to goof off and have fun with them, which, you know, I guess is a good reason for all of us to really enjoy our bodies more, that it can we can have a lot of fun in our bodies. But they have chosen a way to grow their souls, and that current incarnation is the way they're doing it right now. And if they're there in our families, they're doing it with us in our families right now. And that it taps a little bit into animal spirituality, which is a subject that I will talk about in more length at another time. A little bit today if we get to it. Um, but spirituality is kind of infuses all of our lives together. It's springtime here in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Washington. And, you know, watching the trees bloom and, and flowers and plants and new babies being born right and left, squirrels and birds and what else. And you realize that, you know, the world keeps moving on and it has a reason for it and we have a reason for being in it. And when we're one of the things that we're doing in advancing ourselves in the world is creating a new relationship with the animals that have chosen to be part of our families and that we have chosen to be in a family relationship with. And it is sacred, but it's also um, a lifestyle that you've created for yourself. There are many people who aren't going to appreciate living with animals um, because they don't have the time or the interest, then they're just not organized like that. Uh, that's not what they're interested in. But also, there are many people that live with animals who really still feel the way that people have felt for eons, that they're there to work for us, to do certain jobs for us, herd cattle, whatever, uh, service dogs, uh, search and rescue, all of those kinds of beings, or just a pet that makes us feel better because we're all alone and we don't have other humans to talk with, all kinds of reasons. But a conscious choice to bring an animal into your life on a mind-body-spirit level is something entirely different. And that is the choice that will inform you in your search to communicate with them so that you understand what they're saying to you and what their thoughts and their dreams are and what they want you to know about them and the world that they live in with you. And um, that takes believing in them and it takes believing in yourself. So if you say, I can't do it, I'm not cut out like that, I'm not any good, or intuition isn't my forte, or whatever, you're wrong, because we're all intuitive, we're all healers, we're all tapping those abilities every day, all day long, and most of us are doing it wrong, meaning not that there's a technique that's wrong, but it's that 
all that information is out there. We're just not learning how to tap it. And that's a problem with people with their animal families. So let me give you some tips on that. So um, learn first how your intuition works. Because if you're trying to talk with your dog or cat and your intuition runs more towards feelings, you're not going to have as much success. So experiment and learn how your intuition works. Well, uh, eventually, most of us are a combination of seeing, hearing, feeling, and knowing, the four main intuitive skills. Some people are mostly one or the other. There are some people who work as professional mediums, for example, who are strictly clairvoyant. They only see the dead. And so they've had to work out symbology with the dead. So if the dead are holding up roses, they know what that means in a you know, and uh, to me, that's limited and must be very frustrating. And I think those people are very brave to become professionals when they're not tapping all of the for the full realm of intuitive abilities. But that's how they work. So more power to them. So learn how your intuition works. Relax and don't be tense around it. Right. So relax so I was sitting there talking to Murphy Murphy please talk to me so I live we live in Seattle Washington and the joke is Murphy was talking to me what she wanted to say was already three hours south in Portland Oregon that's how quickly thinking works so I was so focused on her talking to me right there that I created the block that I couldn't get past And she was frustrated with me, and she made it very clear she was frustrated, like, oh, sighing and rolling her eyes and so on. And then if you really want to communicate with your animals, think about what somebody does if they want to communicate with you and they're interested in chatting with you or having a conversation or getting to know you, right? If they're savvy, they're asking you something about what you're interested in. So this last weekend, if you were really interested in having a conversation with me, you would have asked me about two things. One, what kind of plants I'm putting on my deck for spring and summer and fall. And two, and most important, last weekend was, hey, let's talk about horse racing. Because I've been a big horse racing fan since I was like 11. Um, And so if you're going to talk with your animal, like, Ask them what they're interested in. Now, here's a couple of things to think about in that. Since I remember taking my a dog, Murphy, to, well, Alki, too, to uh, my other dog, um, to animal communication classes. And, you know, this is an amazing world. And we want to hear, you know, the secrets of the universe from our animals. In particular, what lifetimes did we share together? Because you may be shocked to realize Souls that have chosen animal bodies have a much easier time with their spirituality as well as their knowledge of past lives. And they're not really interested in talking about whether they lived with us in the 13th century mud hole in France, because they remember that. They're more interested in what they're doing right now, as well as we should be. Because they've learned from those lifetimes and they have not forgotten those experiences. When we choose human bodies, I always say humans are the hardest things to um, human bodies are the hardest things to manage because we forget our previous lifetimes, we forget what we learned, and kind of have to start all over. So when you're talking with your dog, you know you may may have very well lived in a mud hole in France together in a previous lifetime, but you know what you really want to talk about when you're getting used to talking to them is. What are they interested in right now? And I can tell you for a fact that most animals are interested in food. So one of the first things you can do is ask your dog or cat, what do you like to eat? So that was a tip in an animal communication book that I picked up one day back in 2001. uh, Because I just had a very vivid demonstration of how animals work or how the world around us works when Murphy got us out of the house two minutes before a major earthquake hit. She knew it was coming and she was doing her damnedest to get out of the house and get me to open the door and get us outside, Um, which didn't actually work out too well, but really enlightened me as to the fact that there's more going on in the world than humans are paying attention to. So I sat down and I closed my eyes and I followed the directions, which said, Murphy, 
what do you like to eat, right? And I gave myself five minutes, five minutes to learn how to communicate with my dog. I admit I'm lazy and I want things to happen really fast, but my entire professional career as an intuitive came down to those five minutes. That's all I was going to give it. So I sat back, I closed my eyes, and I'm like, Murphy, what do you like to eat? Oh, probably 30 seconds went by and I opened my eyes and I'm peeking at her and she's flat out unconscious, dead asleep on the floor. I thought, okay, that's really not too useful. Not realizing that it didn't matter if they were sleeping because they're still listening on that soul level and personality level at some point. So I closed my eyes again and I said, Murphy, what do you like to eat? And then it happened. All of a sudden, I saw an assembly line approaching me from the direction that Murphy was lying in, so it was to my right. And along came a a procession of glass bowls, exactly like the bowls that I served her meals in. And the bowls would come along in the assembly line. The assembly line would literally stop right in front of my nose so I could get a good look at that bowl, and then it would move on. (laughs) And so there was a bowl full of cooked turkey. Another bowl full of carrots, another bowl full of broccoli, another full of bananas and blueberries, another one of dog cookies. Well, by this point, I was like stunned and I opened my eyes and Murphy was sitting bolt upright, staring at me, eyes wide in shock. And she came running over and jumped on me and it's like food, 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 food. And I was like, oh, my God, that worked. Somehow I communicated with her. Now, the process of doing it was all wrong. Don't bother to close your eyes and don't meditate for crying out loud. Meditation does not get you anywhere in animal communication or any other sort of intuitive adventure. But the point of the matter is, if you want a tip on how to communicate with your animals, do something that intrigues them, that makes them interested in asking them what they like to eat is useful. Now, I knew Murphy liked all of those foods, but the fact that she was sitting bolt up bolt upright and staring at me and like totally shocked convinced me that I actually heard what she was showing me Um, after the break I want to give you some more ideas a couple of stories um, and some more tips on how to communicate with your animals hang in there we'll be right back Conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council.
Welcome back to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz, and today we're talking about the real world, oh, hard word to say, the real world issue of learning to talk with our own animals. Okay, so before we run out of time, I want to uh, make sure I cover a couple of topics. And one was the thing that I just said, if you're going to try to talk with your animals, don't meditate. Okay, so I'm not saying don't meditate during your life. Um, in some ways, I don't understand what meditation is. In other ways, I've had professional meditators or people who teach meditation say, like, Robin, quit asking that question. You're meditating all day long. That's who you are. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I don't know. To me, meditation is clearing your mind and emptying it. And that's the last thing you want to do when you're communicating with your animals. When you're first starting out, there are animal communicators who will tell you, you know, make your mind a blank piece of paper. Well, again, that's part of clearing your mind to get past the clutter. Like Murphy sitting on my bed and like me saying, Murphy, talk to me. And what she was saying was already, you know, on its way to the South Pole. Uh, take it easy. Relax around it. Give yourself a break. If you're going to meditate, you know, you start your day by, you know, getting yourself in that frame of mind that whatever meditation does to remind you that the things that we're doing in our lives through with our intuition and our healing abilities are things that we cut ourselves off several hundred years ago when we decided that science was a new answer to things in the world instead of religion. And neither one of them are sufficient unto themselves. So they're backups. They're backups to living full lives where our intuition and our healing abilities are right there in front of us and we're using them. So if you meditate to get yourself into that frame of mind that says, okay, I'm relaxed and I'm grounded and I'm balanced and I'm spiritually connected and all that, that's great. But that is not the way to learn how to communicate with animals. That's something else entirely. If you want to learn to communicate with an animal, be practical about it and pay attention to what they're doing. Um, and again, as I said, my dog Elkai, for example, literally spoke out loud in English the morning a friend and I were on our way to do an animal communication class. And I couldn't figure out what that noise was or where it was coming from until I leaned down and looked into his crate and the words were coming back at me from inside the crate. Uh, hello. Hi, you know, kind of like a robot. Um, and I was shocked because, you know, dogs don't have the vocal cords that humans have to, and the tongue and the all that set up so that they can talk like we can. And that's where we make a mistake in learning to have a relationship with the world around us. We don't think a tree can talk to us or a building or an animal because we're con we're content with the way humans communicate and we think that's the only way. In fact, it's the only way for a lot of humans, but it's not the only way to communicate with other beings because they're sitting there, you know, far more advanced than we are and able to communicate using their own intuitive and healing abilities. So learn how to tap into those. Um, Alki, when he was speaking out loud to me, um, only had to do it that one time for me to realize that I'd been a real jerk and not listening to what he wanted to do in terms of participating in an animal communication class. And as we became closer over his life t with mine, I realized that he didn't need to do anything more in terms of animal communication or telepathy mind to mind because I was very, very aware of what he was thinking at all times. And he made it very clear, too. He'd come up to me and he'd look at me like, pay attention to me, look me straight in the eye, and then he'd look at my lap, and he'd look at me like, hello, have you got it? I want to sit in your lap kind of thing. So pay attention to those cl uh, clues that your animals are giving you. Does your, does your cat come up and rub against you and purr, and is it hungry or does it want attention? These are things that you learn by observation, so you're already clearly communicating more than you realize with your animal families. Um, so... Uh, they are interested in deepening their relationship with you and they're just waiting for you to relax around the fact that yes you can communicate with them and actually have conversations whether it's talking or feeling or or seeing the pictures that they're giving you um, or just knowing what it is that they're trying to say it's a different way of communicating than humans do in terms of verbal 
communication, but it's real and it works. And that's where getting a buddy to work with really helps. Um, I have a couple of people that I trust implicitly in their ability to use their intuitive and healing abilities. And I call on them when I need them. And they call on me when they need me. And um, there are times when I'll say, hey, tell me what so-and-so is thinking. Tell me what, you know, and they'll call me. They're, one of their animals is sick and like, what is, is it time to go? Or what are you getting from them? Because our emotions get really wrapped up in our own animals. And sometimes it takes an outsider. You know, just like they say, doctors shouldn't treat their own family members. There are times when you need to call in somebody else to help you get an intuitive feel for what's going on with your animals in an emergency and an illness, um, when they seem really depressed for a period of time and you can't figure it out. Um, things like that where you are worried or upset or, or you're really super tired. There have been times when I've been so so tired I haven't been able to hear what my own animals are saying to me. And I trust the buddy system. I trust the person, a couple of people that I'll call and who can call me for that kind of thing. So if you're setting out to learn animal communication, find somebody you know really well and figure out how you're going to work together as animal communicators in this instance. Practice together. Practice on each other's animals. You you will probably know things already about their animals if you're in and out of each other's homes, for example. Um, but uh, use that to deepen your understanding of their animals. And then um, find ways to ask questions of their animals that their human person would know the answer to. So like their favorite foods or what is their favorite toy or how do they feel about the new cat or dog animal family member. Um, things like that that the human has already knows already knows or has observed so that they can give you positive feedback on whether uh, you're tuning in or whether you aren't tuning in and helping you to fine tune your ability to communicate. That's why um, having a buddy really works and play intuitive games with another person. Um, when I do um, workshops, I will have people send pictures and and back and forth to each other in colors and pictures and have them actually draw what they're seeing because sometimes it's hard to describe what you're seeing but if you draw it um, that person gets an idea for example one time I was uh, sending someone a boomerang and they thought it was a sock so we had them draw a picture and the way the picture was you could have been a boomerang or a sock so you know Play out those games with somebody else to fine-tune your intuition and what you're getting from another human, which will help you fine-tune that learning to talk with your animals. The other thing um, is animals are very literal in how they connect with us. And really, you know, as much as we love them, as much as they're family members, as much as the new age of communicating and living with animals is I believe about heart and soul growth, um, which is new, really. Um, we created relationships with families so that we could both survive in the, or animals, so that we could both survive in the wilderness way back when, when we didn't have streets or homes or anything, but, you know, we were primitives eons ago, developing into the human species and learning to live with wolves and other beings out there. So we're learning up from to heart and soul growth. We're learning to understand that animals have feelings just like we do. They have emotions. They have soul purpose. They uh, And that's where the idea of animal spirituality comes in and talking about it. They have a reason for being here. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there in the world right now, in the world of animals, who think animals are our gurus and teachers and they're here to save us from ourselves, which is absolutely ridiculous and insulting to us and to our animal families. Because, hello, they have their own reason for being in that body. 
And of course, if they're in our families, that reason includes us just as ours includes them. But it is not the sole purpose for their existence and not maybe even the main one. My animals have chosen to come back to be with me in Ollie's case because he didn't finish his job in his body as Alki because he died before he could finish it. And also because um, he stepped into a role as like I have as an ambassador with different beings in different dimensions. Um, although he doesn't seem to be stepping into it very quickly. And every time they show up at our house and all these different beings from different dimensions, I'm like shaking my head and going, okay, you can try if you can get past the fact that he's barking at you. <laughs> we laugh a lot at our house, which you kind of have to do. But um, also, they also take us very literally. And here's an example of that. My cat, Karis, uh, which is a Welsh word for love, is a Russian blue who was two years old on February 10th. And when she was first here with us, she was sitting in bed with us. And uh, I told her she could st sit in bed with us. And it was just getting used to her living with us and being with us. And I told her that um, if she was going to start sleeping with us, she had to prove that she was a big girl and, you know, not do anything like pee in the bed. And I also, she was also bouncing around a lot. And I said, you know, if you don't settle down and just like stay in one spot so that we can all rest together, then you're going to have to go back in your crate. I don't want you bouncing around the house. So I get up to get a drink. I come back. She's peed in my spot in the bed. And I'm like, what the hell have you done? <laughs> I was so annoyed with her. Why are you doing this? Why did you do this? And that's when I relied on the buddy system. I was so upset with her that I couldn't hear her. And I, it was being a brat. And the answer was absolutely hilarious. And I should have known better. Karis peed in my bed because I told her if she got out of bed and couldn't didn't settle down, she was not going to be allowed to stay with us. And so her answer was... He told me if I moved, I couldn't sleep with you, and I had to pee, so I did. <laughs> totally my fault. A little bit of her fault, too. But you see what I'm getting at. So when you're learning to communicate with your animals, and we're almost out of time here, learn to rely on your intuition. Learn to rely on theirs. Develop a sense of humor. Get a buddy system. And then when things get difficult, what I always say, when in doubt, sing. Um, when I was really struggling to communicate with my animals, I decided, well, the best thing to do was to go nonverbal or use music or just try to keep my body busy while I was allowing my mental abilities to tune into my kids. So I put them in the bathtub and I said, okay, let their souls demonstrate who and what they are, their souls and their personalities in song. And I opened my mouth and I sang, not words, music. And Murphy's song as I was bathing her was this lullaby with a soft little kind of jilty little jazz tune totally fit her personality alki the my rough and tumble boy was all funky jazz so when in doubt sing allow your intuition to find different ways of getting through to you i like to in some ways call myself the vacuuming psychic keep your body busy so that your intuition has an opportunity to step forward and you can grab what it is that's flying by and follow the customs of the country you're visiting so you know i personally think no one in the world should wear shorts. I mean, I'm horrified to see naked white knees in public or any kind of knees in public. But people do it all the time. Um, but be polite in the country that you're visiting. So when you're wanting to communicate with your animals, treat them respectfully. And um, remember that they're animals first and foremost. They have animal brains. They have uh, reactions that are typical of predators and prey animals so pay attention to that and have fun with it as i close for today there's a lot more i want to talk with you about animals and our relationship with them but go go with this you love them you know they love you you've created a family together relax around it practice 
practice communicating with them, develop a buddy system, and go from there. You will never regret trying to communicate with your animals because, in fact, you already are, and working at it is proving to them that you believe enough in them and you consider them equals to you enough to pay attention, to try to communicate in a way that they can communicate with us. And that's all it takes, love and respect. So I want to thank you for joining me today. You can join me at Facebook Live every Monday at 11 Pacific Time at Humanity Healing Page. You can also contact me for my services at my website, robinfritz.com. And now as we um, close up for the day, remember that I am now here on the first and third Monday of the month. And let me know if I can work with you and how I can do that. And cross your hands on your heart. Breathe into the palms of your hands. Let mind, body, and spirit come back together. Close down the crumb chart connect to Fallon. And let energy flow. Let energy flow into you. Let energy flow to the world. Sending peace and love and harmony. Flow to your animal families. They are awesome. You have an incredible gift when you live with an animal. Cherish it. Cherish them as they cherish you. Thank you for joining me. Take care and goodbye. Goodbye.